Hey, what's up there, all you space lovers? It's craziness of the internet. We're back again with another factional warfare video in EVE Online. Today we'll be discussing the Min Mintar Republic, and what I would class as one of the more advanced factions in EVE Online, as they do mid, close, and long-range control fighting. But this does not mean that they are better than any other faction. They are just more secure for solo and small gang fleet combat. So because of this, to understand the Min Mintar Republic's brawl, mid, and long range tactics, we do have to break this into a two video series, as the Min Mintar Republic does rely on heavily based shield and armor style tactics, with speed and agility as their main factor for controlling the battlefield. Alright there guys, so today we'll be looking at the Breacher for the Min Mintar Republic. Now when it comes to the Breacher, this is one of the Min Mintar's best mid to long range frigates. What I mean by that is they will excel best at 7500 meters and beyond as they are designed to mitigate and control the battlefield when it comes to other frigate class ships. This is why they get an extra mid slot. Now the first build we're going to be looking at right here, this is an active brawler, meaning that we are using active shield modules, so mainly our tank will be our rep cycle, so we do have over here, you can see a medium ancillary shield booster. Now every level that you acquire in your skill set for the Min Mintar frigates will give you on the breacher a 7.5% shield boost amount. So what we did is we went ahead and added that 7.5% amount per skill level with our medium ancillary shield booster now at max skills we'll have 35 percent bonus which is a huge amount giving us an incredible stability of life as long as we're using it under controlled circumstances and knowing that our tank is our active, meaning once our charge is in our ancillary shield booster and our small ancillary armor repper runs out, that's pretty much our tank and we are done. But once you know things like that and understand how the Breacher works, you will realize that when you're using its mid to long range control factors that you want to make sure you are always beyond brawl range. So the maximum range for brawl range is 7,500 meters. And remember in EVE Online, 1,000 meters is one kilometer. When I'm saying 7,500 meters, I'm referencing 7.5 kilometers. So as long as you make sure your Breacher is able to use the mid in Mintar's power of agility and speed to its advantage, making sure that you always, most of the time in every Min Mintar ship, you should have a web of fire so that even if you're a long range kiter, when they press towards you, you are able to overheat your stasis web of fire and nullify their speed because there is no other class of ships that will match the Min Mintar's race for agility and speed as this race is based upon speed factors for agility but knowing and understanding that Min Mintar uses its control for range and knowing that its speed is its main factor mainly when you're Min Mintar race you don't want to be up close and personal you actually want to be more like a drive-by perspective and what I mean by that is you don't want to tackle your opponents right away you don't want to get in and do the web scram thing like as soon as possible some people do that inside of the plexus and stuff like that this is one where you would have to snag and control them for the fight but understanding that using speed and agility with missiles and rockets and their projectile weapon systems because when it comes to the Min Mintar race projectile weapon systems are like the human race here on earth so we're using projectile weapons like bullets so because of that the Min Mintar Republic has a low fall off rate because of the projectile versus velocity they don't really lose their projectile fall off until basically the gunpowder runs out. It's the same as Keldari, they don't lose their missile velocity until the fuel of the missile or the rocket runs out, etc. So the same aspect is being applied here for the Min Mintar Republic's weapon system. But remember that the Min Mintar Republic is the second hyper-class faction in EVE Online. What I mean by that is the Min Mintar Republic is designed more for solo and small gang factors of PvP and they acquire to hyper into shield 
shield and armor and the example I could give you where the other best solo EVP faction is Galente. They are also a hyper class faction but they hyper class into armor and structure so they do two completely different things. Then if we're swinging around and we discuss fastly Amar, then Amar and Kaldari are the best fleet composition player based factions in the game as Amar focuses heavily on armor and Kaldari focuses heavily on shields. Now by understanding that it does not mean that any class or any faction of any of the ships cannot be played solo and cannot be played in small gang. These ship classes and designs will just shine better in formation than in solo and small gangs when you're looking at certain faction ships versus other ships. But as that's been said let's get back into this build right here that we added our rocket launcher twos three of them and on top of that we are getting 25% bonus to our rocket rate of fire now what a lot of people don't know is the fastest weapon system in the game that fires is blasters from the galente faction but sadly they do not have very much range when it comes to the factor that they can dish out huge dps and do it very fast but you know the downside to that is it's very easy to control the range when it comes to the galente faction if they do not have allies with dampeners or a way to force the enemy in so knowing that that weapon system shoots the fastest the second fastest firing weapon system in the game could be considered as long as you're using the proper bonuses and things like that I would say is the rocket launcher too because if you have a ship that increases its rate of fire and you go over to the rig slot even though right here we are using defensive rigs if in the rig slot you were to put in say uh, if in the rig slot you were to put in say a uh, rate of fire increase module for your rockets then we could get up up to max skill the rocket launcher firing up to 2.2 seconds to 2.4 seconds so sometimes we are matching i want you guys to understand little tiny things in combat that can help you proceed to become a better player and understanding eve online that we are yes in a final fantasy style turn-based action game but it is in what we would call real-time action what i mean by that is if you can reduce the cycle time of your weapon system sometimes to under the cycle times of a repper so as an example if we open up the small ancillary armor repper here you guys can see that it takes six seconds to activate this thing so if i were to turn it on and i started repairing and it, it takes me six seconds well i know that if i look at the rocket launcher 2 and that it has a rate of fire of four seconds then i know it's literally going to shoot me 1.5 times before i will be even able to rep so if i can reduce the actual cycle time of my rate of fire to less than half of my enemy's repping power there is no way that he is ever going to be able to catch my cycles and ever going to be able to defeat me in the end he's going to run out of either end silly or he's going to run out of basic charges unless he kills me first somehow but most likely if they're tank built then they do have reduced damage output because it's either one or the other you can go heavily tanked with mediocre damage you can go medium tanked with medium damage or you can go lightly tanked with huge amounts of dps that is up to you that is the greatness of eve online that all of us have the choice to choose what we want to fly and how we want to fly it. understanding those things will make you such a better pilot in eve online and and I hope you guys do enjoy my video series as there is many videos to be released slowly. They have been completed and are ready to go. You can see that we are situated to look and lock down either after burner fit brawlers or mid-range control that are usually utilizing one of their mid slots for something else other than a webifier so that we can control the aspect of the battlefield when we land by using our afterburner, our warp scrambler, and our webifier all together. So basically what I'm saying is if they were afterburner fit, so if they had the same type of engine as you, and that you tackle them with the scrambler and the webifier, they're not going anywhere, and you nullify their velocity. So now let's say that they only have a warp scrambler Rambler, but they also are after burner fit basically you now have each other tackled but the difference is you control the mitigation of the range as you have control of the velocity as one of the most powerful things in eve online you guys is 
velocity. This is what makes the Minmentar Republic an actual sneaky powerhouse and a lot of people don't see them for what they are because agility and the ability to turn on a dime and the ability to use functionalities like speed is one of the powerhouses in the game and it will wreck almost everything all the time. If you can't catch me and I can volley you there's basically nothing you could do. It doesn't even matter if you did a thousand DPS you can't catch me GG. That's just how it goes. Once you guys understand factors like that the Minmatar race becomes an incredibly unique race in its own way because it's a solo based faction for solo pvp but also designed for incredible small gang engagements and then in the end it can hold its own in heavy fleet combat also remembering that all of these builds are also alpha and omega friendly so remember you guys that when you're using medium and ancillary shield boosters and heavily based things in the mid slot it does take a lot of cpu so you can see that all of these things are a lot of the reduced cpu versions of things so that we can fit it all on the ship even this character can't fly some of these things right here so even if i infoed it and went requirements it says it would take like five days to get rockets five something like that as this character is specialized in galente but knowing that most of this is what you need to reduce the cpu output only for newer skilled players remember you guys in eve online as you go along and your tune gets better and better skilled that you want to take the builds that you acquire along the way and change them and adapt them to your playstyle for what you're doing at that time and also remembering to t2 out your modules when you can as say this tune was max skilled in engineering and most of the weapon systems then you'd be able to take Take at least three or four of these things right here and you'd be able to tech two them out if not better so understanding things like that it should make it a lot simpler for you as a player in EVE Online to make and adjust your builds in the future now in our mid slots we did not do anything fancy all we did was stick to defense as when it comes to the Minmentar ships some of them have better defense against kinetic and explosive but a lot of them do have weaknesses to EM so mainly understanding that especially when you're building something that's defensively in to like say shield so here we're using the medium ancillary shield booster combining that with our bonus to the rep from the ship's skill class allows us to have a pretty heavily defensive tank when it comes to our active ability but remembering that when we run out of charges our tank's pretty much going to be kaput so because of that we added two small EM shield reinforcers and one small thermal shield reinforcer so if we simulate the ship right here you can see that our resistance are pretty mediocre across the board and heavily more into EM than any of the rest as most of the time when you get engaged in this ship if their weapon systems aren't specifically a specific type then they most likely will apply EM damage to you as the Minmentar's main rival enemy faction is Amar and Amar's weapon damage specializes mainly in EM and thermal Galente is kinetic, Eldari has choice of field, and when it comes to Minmentar, you guys are mainly kinetic and explosive, but each one of the weapon types can be adjusted to choose certain kinds of dual damage types that we'll get into later. So you guys do see that our resistances across the board here are pretty decent, and we will be able to hold out in our 1v1 versus any other pilot. Now we do have a greater stronghold hold in one versus one fights when we are adjusting our combat so that we choose our fights and engage other ships that do not have the boosting ability so i would not want to engage the incursus i would not want to engage any other ship that has a boosting ability class to it understanding things like that it does not mean that you cannot engage those ships and you cannot win you can but you will have a huge advantage over any other ship that you engage that does not have the bonus basically you have a strong booster and they don't when you're at max skills knowing that 
when you're the Min Mintar Republic, you guys, you have to use your speed and your agility as one of your main things, not just always thinking about DPS and damage like most people do, but the Min Mintar Republic, especially when you get into cruiser style ships like the Stabber and things like that, you can see them shine when it comes to their power of ability and speed and the angles of agility and being able to pick off their enemies with the projectile traversal. It's pretty amazing. But sadly, in EVE Online, a lot of the skilled PvPers over the years have retired in the game, including myself, but I thought since I seen all of these revamped things in EVE Online, and this game was one of the games that appealed to me most out of any other game I've ever played in my life, I thought I would come back and bring some informational series to you guys to help you guys understand what it's like to get out there and kick some ass in EVE Online. When you know things like that, you can see that when your tank here fails on your shield boosting that you do have a backup which is your ancillary armor repper so when this fails try to make them not notice that you have this one or try to make them not know that you have this one and use this one making them think you're kind of some kind of structure or tank thing and by saying structure tanked as well if you do not want to use the resistances part here for your rig slots and remember you guys it is your choice how you want to engage and build your ships and choose them along the way as you should as a player be backpacking and in another video I'll explain what that is to you guys it's in pretty elite stuff when it comes to understanding like basic combat and things like that in EVE Online I don't think I've ever seen anyone ever describe it but you guys will have to wait for things like that down the road on my channel so knowing that the Min Mintar Republic is extremely strong in its speed and abilities like that aspect you guys now we're going to get into to the next build here for the breacher and that is the speed version of it okay guys so when we get into the next build of the breacher here you guys might want to understand that also when it comes to the Min Mintar Republic that target painting and increasing your enemy's signature radius is actually a crucial role when it comes to their playstyle in EVE Online. So this is why a lot of their support ships will have a bonus to increasing the signature power of say a target painter and things like that because when it comes to the power of the speed of the Min Mintar they have to make sure that their projectile weapons aren't gonna miss when they're ripping past their opponent so using things like a you know, target painter and stuff like that from your allies because remember you guys in eve online yes the galente and the min Mintar are the most powerful solo based factions in the game and yes you can solo in kaldari and amar just as good but they are classed to mainly be small and fleet style ships in the game. Once you guys acquire all of this knowledge and have the basic understandings of the bottom principles in EVE Online, then you will always remember that the best ship you could ever fly, you guys, is Friendship, as EVE Online is a social sandbox game, and it is best to always play with someone else or a small group or a small fleet, things like that. When you are a solo pilot, you'll have to understand that it'll take way more skill to win the fights, and because most of the time you will be outnumbered 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 5 to 1, sometimes you'll get blobbed. You have to take into account that if you aren't understanding how to control a battlefield and how to win your version of the fight style that you're drawing your opponents into, then sadly you're going to lose a lot of ships and on top of that you'll end up having to use things in the end when you do get skilled to make sure that you can fight these small groups and gangs and stuff like that your ships will end up being extremely expensive and then you'll have to on top of that most likely use some kind of a pod with some kind of implants and bonus to things like that or else mathematically you just won't be able to take on it's just n plus one that's just how it is 5 beats 4, 4 beats 3, and so on. So you can see right here on this build, you guys, that we do have the 3 light missile launcher 2s, and we are getting still that 25% bonus to our light missile rate of fire. Now, because we have to use heavily based CPU modules, as I always like to have some way to rep slightly if I have reduced speed, as when it comes to the other kiting vessels in some of the other factions, the Min Mintar 
Republic's Breacher here in kite mode does not do as well as some of the rest, so it will be sometimes a thousand meters a second slower than some of its counterparts, but that is because it should be used at mid-range to control the brawlers and rep past their powerful DPS with its boosting power to its rep, but that does not mean that it can't be a kiter as shown right here. So we are using the Min Mintar Republic's ability to increase the signature of our opponent while we are ripping around and when we simulate this ship you guys because you can see that we do have an ancillary shield booster and that we are using the flux coil we do have to use two small processing overclocking units on our rig slots to make sure that we have enough cpu to acquire all of our assets so you guys can look at it right here and remember that you have to use navy cap 50s it's the best one in your slot right here now you would look at it and you would be like wow but that's not actually stable but it is because most of the time you're not going to be tackling them remember you guys in a kiting vessel ship you don't always want to just go in and tackle yeah you can click on your modules and do things like that but when i go over here and look you guys and see that my enduring warp disruptor at 20 kilometers overheated at 24 the tech 2 version will do 24 to 29 to 30 depending on your skills remember you guys you do want to tee to your modules and make your ship better as you go along i do encourage this and to change any of the builds the way that you would like to play in eve online i am just helping out you newer style players and getting older players that might not be into pvp a good understanding of what it's like to get into player versus player aspects of the game because in factional warfare a lot of people will look at things like the lp and the combat sites you guys and think of it as isk you should think of it more in the aspects of i didn't just acquire myself the isk i actually acquired myself a ship so now i can go out and pvp so especially if my ship is say like this one right here 11.4 million so you understand that in 10 minutes of time of putting in the effort in a militia site i just now acquired myself two basic ships in cost but it does take the time to go and exchange the lp but in the latest patch we do have the ability once again you guys as of this video to send each other lp and if you guys wanted a quick little tip on that right now i could just show you right here that you would just go in your wallet where your lp is and type in the corporation and then you can send the amount of lp so if you do have a friend or something like that someone that you could trust you could sell directly your lp to them for reduced is cost so you you didn't have to do the jumping around and things like that which is more beneficial to players that want to get into pvp because maybe some people don't have the time to jump around and stuff like that but they actually want to play player versus player because yes there is pve style aspects of eve online and a lot of it is pve but when it comes down to it this is one crazy social sandbox and pvp is the main goal here even though we need the pve guys to build all of our pvp stuff and god bless their souls because without them we would not even be able to fire a single shot so basically the guys that most of us would call nerds all day long are in the end supplying our war fund with that you guys you can see that we're not gonna try to tackle them right away so if we turn this off we now see that we're fully stable even if we overheat our engine and we go 4200 remember that the condor and things like that will go 5000 and the bird and other little ships that are meant to catch you will go way faster than you so make sure that you choose your target correctly and this thing will outshine when you have an actual friend with you that is mid to long range as well so he can control with say a web or something because you just giving that little tiny bonus with that signature radius causes huge critical hits which sucks for any actual pilot and if we do load in the missile launcher twos you guys make sure to always use kaldari ammunition and then when they get closer to you and you're fully speeding remember to load up some tech two if you get the chance but the kaldari ammunition will give you the furthest amount of range as you can see right here our targeting range is 40.25 kilometers and then with the kaldari style light missiles it'll give us even more flight time the faction ones so we get 32 
two kilometers that allows us to be able to shoot almost as far as we can lock them but remember you guys that speed is your tank in this ship so do not let drones catch you and do not let other missiles catch you remember when you use these kiting builds that i show you guys because some of them will be weaker than other builds and some of them will be stronger but the goal is to be stable for a newer style player to understand in eve online what he or she has to do to be able to start understanding angular effects to traversal velocity and to know what it is like to manually pilot on the screen now a newer player is going to have a really hard and difficult time doing that when they have to understand all of the things I've just listed and then also control their capacitor on top of that could break most newer players and then make it so that they just go down. So being able to let you guys have the ability to rip around in all of the factions versions of a kiting style ship, whether it's stable or underclass stable and what underclass stable means is that when you have everything activated it's completely not stable and when you have one module unactivated then it's stable, it doesn't matter which module you choose so this is a good starter ship and a good ship to fly around on i have gotten lots of kills with it because nobody ever expects to light you up with a signature modifier and then start ripping around past them around 4,000. And always remember you guys to carry nanite paste right here inside your cargo hold so that you can repair your overheated modules especially when you get good distance on your enemy. So all in all the breacher will always be a solid application ship and a solid mid range and long range control ship as well. So I hope you guys do understand the defensive and offensive tactics that I am explaining and showing you here. And if you are enjoying my video series please do like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.